everybody. Welcome back to the Routine Podcast. Gymnastics Conversations. I'm Chelsea. I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. And we're back for episode 82. And I was looking at the calendar. Yes. This time next week, we would be flying to Dallas for nationals. Yeah. It stinks. It does stink. I said sting, but it also stinks. (laughs) It stings. It stinks. And, it, you know, as bad as all that is, we're, like, still stuck in the house. But I'm stuck in the house with you. Yep. <laughs> yep. And um, you actually did the baking this time. I did, but I'm not proud of it. I don't want to put my name on that work. It was fine. It wasn't good. Mom's just being nice. It wasn't as good as my peanut butter cookies. It wasn't. But it was good. Chelsea made banana nut bread. Banana nope. bread. <laughs> or because we didn't have nuts. We barely had flour for the banana nut bread. Yeah. But you were really creative and decided to put chocolate chips in it. I feel like that's standard. I don't... I have never had chocolate chips in banana nut bread. Really? Never. That's the only way I'll eat it. Really? I don't like bananas. I'm not a big banana person nor a big banana nut bread person, but I will eat it. Anyway, anyway, let's not talk about food anymore. But no the food? banana nut bread was fine. The banana chocolate fine. chip bread. That yeah. is not good in Chelsea language. You just baked it like five minutes too much. Yeah, because you got like supersonic ovens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, I haven't baked in a while. Yeah. So I'm just getting my feet wet. Yeah. So here's another one, right? We have zucchini now. And I love. You're bestowing that on me. Yes. I think it's time to try it again. What if I mess it up? It's okay. We'll eat it just like we're eating the other bread. See, but the thing is, like, usually, actually, no, I never really like messing up, but it's usually okay when I mess up because it's like, oh, I'll, I'll just do it again. But now it's like, we only <laughs> have, like, certain amount of ingredients because we're not going to the grocery store. Right. So it's like, you really can't mess it up. Yeah, exactly. And, like, this is going to be our dessert for, like, the week. <laughs> It is. So, like, no pressure, but... It is, because it's like, I think we've got, like, a cup and a half of flour left, so... Is that enough for zucchini bread? I think so, yeah. Maybe I'll do that this weekend. Yeah. And then we can report back. See, I I see where you're going with this, Mm -hmm. because you just don't want to make it. I don't. So you're like, Chelsea, why don't you try again? I I think it's time to try again. (laughs) I do. I really do. And don't put chocolate chips in the zucchini bread, though. Why? Chocolate chips and the banana bread make sense because you can mix chocolate chips and bananas together or like chocolate and banana. You know, that's not foreign. But zucchini and chocolate, new, different thing. I don't even think I've had the zucchini bread before. It's really good. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it better than banana nut bread. We'll see. Okay. What else is new in your life? Um, <laughs> it's see. been a full week. I know. Um, I'm still working on the 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle it's still right in the middle of the island it is and it's a puzzle that first of all i found a place that makes puzzles for me so i've got these really great photographs and i send them off and then they make a jigsaw puzzle for me and you can get 500 pieces a thousand pieces two thousand pieces and so this one i got made two thousand pieces And it's this really beautiful fall scene. It is really pretty. Of a tree that is changing colors. The tree is definitely the focal point, but it's not in the center of the picture. So it's like in that third, but it's like that crisp burnt orange leaf color with like all of these like gradients of blue and stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Chelsea, for noticing all that. So anyway. I'm an artist. Yes, she is. That's actually. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well, that's your major. So you see, you see art in a, you know, in a different way anyway. So anyway, I am, what would you think? Like half done maybe? You've been half done for the past like three weeks. Okay. <laughs> I'm not quite three you quarters could, done. Like the thing is like mom could finish it in a weekend but what happens that's not the point the, the point is not to finish the jigsaw puzzle as quickly as you can the point is to ease into finishing it and enjoying putting the puzzle together because i'm home for who knows how long yeah, that's true. <laughs> maybe that's why i'm not a puzzle person yeah no it's not that the point is not to finish it's like i talked about reading a book i love thick thick books but I hate when they end it's the same thing with the puzzle because after it's over 
you now have to decide, A, am I gonna glue this thing together, which I really don't like to do. B, do I now break it all apart again? All this, you know, month worth of work? Mm -hmm. So I'm not in a hurry to finish it. How are you doing in these quarantine times? I think I'm doing really well. I am not stressed anywhere like I was at the beginning. I think I've really come to terms that I'm home. As long as I don't leave the house, it should be good. And I just try not to watch news 24 hours a day because it just like gets you really anxious. Yeah. We have like a fortress over here. Mm -hmm. Mom even denied her own son coming home. That was so hard. It really was. <laughs> I knew it was hard for you because like every day I was like, you're telling him like he's not coming, right? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Have you told him yet? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm like, Mom, you got to tell him so he knows. It's so hard to say no to your child. And it's a child who wants to come and see you because he's worried. And to say, no, you can't come see me because you might make me sick due to the virus. It's so hard. And it would be hard for you, too. Because remember, I almost told you no, yeah. too, when you were like, I'm coming. I'm like, eh. I could hear it in your voice, though, that it was like, you're either coming home now or you're not going to see mom for god knows how long right and you're going to be by yourself right 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 and, and we all are going to be by ourselves if that's it i'm glad you made it right i'm obviously glad you came home because it would definitely feel different if you were there and he was there and i'm here and we don't see each other for three months that would have been really difficult and also during that time you know chelsea hasn't mentioned it yet but i've got a birthday coming mm. and so that would have really made it even harder that yeah. I'd be here in, at the house by myself celebrating. Well, I'd have my puppies, but other than that. <laughs> um, but you know what? The thing that we didn't talk about is I made mask, right? Oh, yeah. I thought you said mass. I was like, where do you go to mass? No, I didn't go to mass. <laughs> mask. She did. I made seven. You're artistic yourself. What are you talking I about? I am crafty. I do love to do crafts. But uh, Chelsea found a pattern for me. My friend actually forwarded it to me because she was showing me all of her masks that her mom made her. And I was like, my mom could do that for me. Uh -huh. Send and me the did. pattern. Yep. And she did. It's a great pattern. And I've got, I've got a closet of fabric. She's saying this as we're sitting in the basement surrounded by yarn. So. Yeah. I have a, a basement full of yarn and a closet full of fabric. And she's not exaggerating. No, oh, no, nope, I'm not. I mean, I haven't sewn in many years, although I still love to sew. I haven't sewn in many years, but the fabric that I have is from when the kids were young. So 90s stuff. It's, yeah. Everything is very 90s. <laughs> right. And so I'm like, well, this is like perfect cotton material for mask. And I found like a Power Rangers, <laughs> but not like the OG Power Rangers, yeah. like Kimberly and yeah. um, not Rugrats, but some Nickelodeon themed stuff that you all used yeah. to like. So it turned out really nice because you have the pattern fabric on the outside, but then you have matching fabric, color coordinated fabric on the inside. Yeah. It turned out pretty nice. I told mom to open up an Etsy and start making bank <laughs> off this, but she wasn't with it. No, I don't do that. <laughs> so anyways, that's I've, so I've been filling my week just fine. Yeah. I feel like this past week was good. Kind of slow on the gymnastics front, but, you know, life is happening. <laughs> it is. It really is. And I think we all are, you know, with, with every day we come more to terms with the seriousness of the pandemic and how to put things in perspective with that in mind. Mm -hmm. Our new normal. Mm -hmm. But we also spent some time studying Alabama as part of the senior spotlight for today's show. Yeah, but before we get into Alabama, we got a lot of great comments about our episode last week where we talked about the University of Alaska. Oh, and yes, and uh, Rebecca helped us. Meryl sent us a tweet and she said, awesome podcast. Thank you. And it was cool to see the team recognize the podcast episode and us honoring the seniors, but also the seniors themselves favoriting our tweets right. and liking the episode. I agree with that because that's really what the episode was about. It was about recognizing the seniors and their contribution. And so to actually have the seniors listening and being thankful for that recognition, that was really good. But also this week, 
the Honda Sport Award finalists were announced. Do you know what the Honda Award is? I have no idea. I don't even think I've ever heard of it before, Chaz. Yeah, so the Honda Award is presented by the Collegiate Women's Sports Award. And it has happened for the past 44 years to the top women athletes in 12 NCAA sanctioned sports. And it signifies the best of the best in collegiate athletics. So this year, the Honda Award nominees are Kyla Ross, Maggie Nichols, Lexi Ramler, and Trinity Thomas. Do you have any information on how they were selected or what they're looking for and choosing? Well, I actually do. Oh, good. (laughs) (laughs) So it says the gymnastics finalists were selected by a panel of coaches and experts from the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association. However, given the cancellation of the championships, the panel mostly relied on rankings and scoring. And they say that the winner will be announced next week after voting by administrators. I have no idea who they're going to pick. It was actually kind of cool because Oklahoma posted on their Twitter that Maggie Nichols was a finalist her freshman and sophomore years and actually won the award last year. Oh, and now really? she's nominated as a finalist again this year. Yeah, that it's going to be hard to choose. Although now they're looking at scores and rankings, so maybe it's a little bit easier to choose. I don't know. I think it's going to be Kyla. Why? Because Maggie won three times or Maggie won last year? I was having that debate in my head where it's like, well, just because someone was nominated or already won, does that kind of cancel them? Which I don't think it should at all. But I think Kyla competed more this season. So oh, that's true because Maggie was injured. Mm-hmm. Really, all of them are great yeah. candidates. Oh, yeah, totally. I just think the seniors in this case may have a little bit of an edge on the other gymnasts mm-hmm. again, which shouldn't be a factor, but I don't know. I think it should be a factor based on what the seniors have had to live through this year. I say it's either going to be Kyla or Maggie, but I'm leaning more towards Kyla. Mm-hmm. So as we uh, talked about our last show, we are celebrating seniors, as you know, and Chelsea's little generator machine selected Alabama. Mm -hmm. There are three seniors we want to celebrate Mm -hmm. we talk about Alabama, which I think Chelsea's going to talk about that. But she tasked me with... And these three seniors were like big contributors to the team throughout their career. So it's a big class. But before we do that, you tasked me with trying to understand where roll tie. You tasked yourself. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted. Well, that's true. <laughs> we have our strengths. You're and, the researcher. And for me, research is pretty fascinating. So, did some What reading. did you learn? Well, I'm going to tell you. But can we do like the fight song to kind of get folks started into... Let's get ourselves started. Yeah. Get it started. The YouTube video I have pulled up is called... Give me a roll tide. I feel like I'm in like NPR. We're going to beat the hell out of you. (laughs) Roll Todd, right? So with that. If that doesn't get you hype, I don't know what will. Right, because now it's just Chelsea's been playing it for the last 20 minutes. So it's just stuck in our head. Abama, bama, bama. But (laughs) so in doing the research, Crimson Tide really comes from a sports writer. His name was Hugh Roberts. And this was in 1907. Mm. Okay. Back in your time. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just ha, kidding. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> try to learn here, Chelsea. I try it. I try. Okay, so he's credited for being the first one to use crimson tide to refer to Alabama's football team, and he described the crimson and the white uniforms, and they had this unbelievable performance against Auburn in 1907. This uh, sports editor began calling the team the Crimson Tide. So it started back in 1907. And then the article also shared how the elephant became the mascot 
And this was back in 1930. And again, it was another sports writer. And basically what happened is that there was a football game and it was Alabama against Old Miss. And at the end of a quarter, the earth started trembling. He wrote that there was this distant rumble that continued to grow. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Trusty's listening like, oh, this is interesting, aren't you, Tess? <laughs> yeah. um, and then some excited fan yelled, hold your horses. The elephants are coming. And right when he said that, the varsity team ran out. And at that point, the mascot became the elephant. Mm. So Does he have a name go. or no? Yes. He goes by the name of Big Al. Big Al. He's the mascot. It's like so cool to hear Because you know all of these, especially SEC teams, have this rich history, but you never know why Dee Dee wears all tiger print and why it's so important Mm -hmm. or why crimson and cream is like so important to Alabama. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you hear stories like that where it all makes sense. Well, there's there's a history behind it all. Right. It also makes me like kind of wish that I had that college experience, you know, in the Northeast, they don't really not the same it's no. more academic related mm-hmm. but let me just read one last thing before we start talking about the seniors okay um and this is uh, important to know about big al there's a university rule big al is not allowed to interact on the field with the opponent mascot so he's always got to be separated from any opponent's mascot what <laughs> Have you seen pictures of Big Al? Yes. Does he look like the most friendly little elephant? He does. He does, but he cannot interact with anybody. Interesting. So there you go. That's the history of Crimson Tide. We're going to beat the hell out of you. Bama, bama, bama. Rama, lama, dama, lama. (laughs) (laughs) So anyhow, that's the history on Roll Tide. With that being said, I guess it's time to celebrate the seniors in our... Senior Spotlight. Yeah, so again, there are three seniors from the University of Alabama, which I thought there were actually more, but I guess these seniors just always were contributing, so I I thought there were more. The first one is Winter Childers. She is a bars and beam specialist. She actually started her career as an all-rounder, and what I really liked about her is that she had such a unique style to her gymnastics. She was always very fluid, I guess you could say, and confident. I know when I was watching her as a freshman, I thought she was an upperclassman just because, yeah, she was so confident in all of her movements. And it was actually really unfortunate that towards the end of her career, she had some injuries, so she wasn't able to do all around as much. Um, But she was definitely still a contributor to the team. And it's one of those situations where it's like, if your body was just like able to handle your gymnastics, it would be incredible to see what accolades you would have at the end of your career. Kind of sounds like what you went through, doesn't it? Well, this isn't about me, but (laughs) regardless of her injury, she still had great routines on beam and bars. And I know... This year, she really focused more on bars, but she was still also just a great team player, even though we don't know her personally, obviously. You could tell that she was a great addition to the team. And it looks like that she competed every single meet this year on bars, and she her high score this year was 9.85. And again, she had such unique gymnastics. So if you have the chance to look up Winter's Gymnastics, Um, I highly recommend it. Even if you go back to her freshman year where you can see her do her floor because I know her choreography was one of my favorites. Another senior is Maddie Desch. She was a vault beam and floor specialist and she has been contributing to Alabama's lineup since she came to Alabama. I remember her mostly on floor. I know her freshman year, she did a double Arabian. She also had that really cool middle pass. I think it was one and a half half split jump punch front so again it's one of those passes that keeps on going and you don't know when it's going to end and she's just hopping and bouncing around but something that i've noticed about maddie throughout the years is that every year she became more and more consistent um you could see her confidence grow and she also seemed to understand what college gymnastics was about 
by the time her senior year came around. And um, to Chelsea's point, she competed at every single meet this year, specifically on floor. And her highest score of the season happened at the last meet Mm. um, with Alabama competing against Georgia. And on floor, she scored a 9.925. Wow. So beautiful floor routine. Good for her. She also seemed like a really big competitor, in my opinion. Um, She actually went to Worlds. I forget what year. So she was an elite gymnast. And you could just see that competitive spirit in her through her college career. And then our last senior is Shea Mahoney. Shay, to me, just seems like the epitome of an Alabama gymnast. Why? You know how we say certain LSU gymnasts bleed purple and gold? <laughs> right. She bleeds crimson and cream. Yeah. I wrote in this outline here as I was doing my research. Shay is like the queen of big band floor routines. And I wrote, and this is quote, if a big band floor routine is not done the way that Shay competes these big band floor routines... I don't want it. <laughs> Keep it away from you. <laughs> because re- she sells the heck out of her routine. Yeah, I, re- I remember watching her and her precision and how she competes her floor routines. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much she practices, but every move is so precise. Mm-hmm. And the gymnastics, the tumbling, it's beautiful as well. And that's tiring. Competing a floor routine like that and showing it off the way she does, right. that takes a lot of endurance. Mm-hmm. Um, she also was really great on bars. I know one of my favorite parts of her bar routine was her dismount. And she stuck it a lot of the time. But again, she showed that precision that she has on floor over on bars and also over on vault. And so she was a consistent contributor on all three of those events throughout her career. Um, So I know Alabama's really going to miss her. But also this year, she was named the SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year. Oh, wow. So she's smart, too. Yeah. Wow. Which I love hearing about those awards because at the end of the day, you're student athletes, student first. Yeah. And that's one aspect that we have no idea about. Mm -hmm. So to learn that they're really good at gymnastics and also really good in academics is also, you know, always good to hear. I think just to piggyback on what you said, she actually competed in every single meet, all three of those events at every single meet. So very consistent. And when you look at her top scores, her highest score on vault this year was at her last meet. She got a 9-9. She got a 9-9-2-5 on bars this year. And then again, her high score on floor was the meet against Kentucky where she got a 9-9-5. Wow. So congratulations to all of those seniors. I know I'm going to miss watching your gymnastics and the unique qualities that you bring not only to the Alabama program, but to NCAA gymnastics in general. Agreed. And one of the things that we also want to share in talking about the seniors, I think we also have to talk about Coach Duckworth, Dana Duckworth. Mm. Um, When you look at how Alabama uh, finished this year, they had the sixth highest team score on bars and floor. And uh, again, when we talked about those seniors, I think you look at their scores and clearly they contribute to the team doing so well in those two events this year. And I know we talked about last week, seeing if we could get Dana on the show, but we searched our library of interviews and we actually interviewed her about this time last year at the Flippin' 5K Festival. We did. We did. And it was a fun interview. We didn't get the chance to air it last year because we had so much other content. You know, we interviewed Alicia Boren. There was a lot of other stuff going on. But it's actually perfect for this show because what we're going to share on the interview with Dana is kind of her love for gymnastics in Alabama. But I think more importantly, her love for celebrating young women and supporting them as they continue not only their career in gymnastics, but their success in life as well. And because this was at the Flippin' 5K Festival, in part of the interview, she actually shares why the Collegiate Growth Initiative is so important. As coaches, you know, what's our goal? Our goal is to help them leave a better version of themselves. 
And to me, it's all about where is my self-confidence coming from? How do I find my voice? Where is that self-love and compassion when things don't go well? You know, adversity in life is what makes you stronger. And it's interesting because Alabama's not here as a team. And we had one senior. Who was gorgeous. Who was beautiful. And she danced her heart out and shared her passion. But that young lady came to Alabama shy, quiet, with a lack of confidence. And now, not only is she leaving a All-American on floor, but she has two degrees, an undergrad and her master's in mar digital marketing. She has a job and she just got engaged. <laughs> and I just share that because, you know what? We are women that are just like little girls that have questions and self-doubt and who am I and who am I becoming and it's normal. And a lot of times we see these celebrities that we think everybody has their life together and we're so perfect and all is well, but under the curtain, there's just stuff, you know, and sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes it's gooey and ugly, and, but how do we overcome those things? The Collegiate Gymnastics Growth Initiative is a committee within the WCGA, which is the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association. So to find out more about that, our tagline is WCGAgym.com. We are a part of the growth of how do we add women's gymnastics programs anywhere in the country. It doesn't matter if it's Division One, Division Two, or Division Three. And the idea is how do we increase opportunities for women? If it's women of color through HBCUs, let's do it. If it's through another university that's interested, let's find a way because we're in the height of women's gymnastics in the way that we are on national television live. The number of broadcasts of gymnastics at all levels this year was unprecedented. And I think that we have powerful, aggressive, confident women that go through our programs across the country. And if we can add one women's gymnastics program somewhere in the country who sees the value and the beautiful, elegant, art in motion kind of sport that we are, then call us up, we will come visit you, and we will tell you why gymnastics needs to be at your institution. Love it. Roll time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, roll time. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a wonderful initiative. It's wonderful to be a part of it, and it was a beautiful day. It was gorgeous. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, it was good. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you, Dana, so okay, much. Thanks. So how crazy is it to hear that interview one year later, where right? we now have a new team in women's college gymnastics. It's exactly what she predicted and exactly what she wanted. If we could just get one more school. Yeah. So it's sheer. crazy to see how far just because I feel like we literally just spoke with her right in right. Texas last year. So could you talk a little bit about the, the school? Yeah. So as we mentioned in an episode a couple weeks back, Long Island University is actually starting their program this coming season. So we're excited to see what that team brings to NCAA gym and what other teams are to come in the future. Again, I think it's the success of coaches like Dana and her contribution to the sport, but again, to the success of women and you know the efforts that she and others are putting together just to continue the growth of the sport. So is it time now for the Chelsea Random Generator? It is. Okay, tell me when you're ready for the drum roll. I gotta get oh, my, you want to do the drum roll? I got to get my drumsticks out. Are you nervous? Nope, or are nope. You, I'm you ready. You got your nerves under control? I'm ready. I'm ready too. Okay, here we go. It's calculating. Uh-oh, you're getting the dogs excited. It's calculating. And it is the University of Denver. <laughs> oh, so we're going to go out west. We are. And they also had some good seniors. Yeah. Oh, Maddie Carr. Maddie Carr. Maybe we can talk to Maddie. That would be so cool if we could talk to her. Let's try it. I think we should. But also next week, it's time for our fan favorites. Was it already that time? It's, it's actually past time. I was going to say, it's probably yeah. past that time, isn't it? <laughs> but I nearly forgot. Yo, no, that's... We got to do it before we wrap up our, our season. And that's usually one of the best episodes, just to hear what people think. Remind me again of how we do this? Yes. So every year, we ask you all to vote for your favorite routines, gymnasts, Leos, routine podcast episodes, just as like a little culmination and wrap up to the season. 
And on Twitter, we usually do polls. So it's nice and quick and easy for people to just push which gymnast is their favorite. But we also, on every question, encourage you if your favorite gymnast or team isn't listed to comment below who you think the winner of that question should be. And do we respond as well? I can't remember. We do. Okay. So we got to we gotta uh, start thinking. All right. But we don't have to think together. We can think no, separately. No, this is definitely an independent assignment. Okay, good. <laughs> good. So do you want to hear what the questions are? Yes, please. So there's eight questions. Um, the first one being your favorite vaults of the season. The second, your favorite bar routine of the season. And again, this is all for the 2020 season. We're not going forward. We're not going backwards. <laughs> okay. This season. All right. Your favorite beam routine of the season. Your favorite floor routine. Your favorite gymnast, which I don't even know if we should include that just because I feel bad about that. Why? Because it's so hard. And we can only pick one? Yes. Okay. All right. Your favorite team, which is usually a controversial one. Your favorite team, Leo's, and your favorite routine podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's also just this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you, they can't pick our national series. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. Even though that was a good one. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what you all say are your favorites. Um, for me, I know this is going to be a good refresher because I'm even trying to think like, who competed bars this season? Because I feel like season was such a long time ago. Yeah, I agree. It's like we have to go back and like play videos to remind ourselves. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who vote on Twitter, we usually post a variety of gymnasts. And this is on purpose. I know a lot of times people say, what? Why did you list this person? What? Why did you list this person? We don't want to just list the top three on each event. Right. That's no fun. No. No. And I think you do a really good job of dispersing it broadly. Yeah. Because just because a gymnast is in the top three doesn't mean that their routine was my favorite. You're just making sure people know to look broadly, mm -hmm. not just specifically, but very broadly. Think outside broad. the box. Yep, exactly. I think you do a really good job of that. So I'm excited for next week's episode. I know this is one of our listeners' favorite episodes, so hopefully you guys all tune in next week. Yeah, because we'll have that and... We'll be talking about the University of Denver and, yeah. and, and the team success. Which the gym internet loves the University of Denver. I love the University of Denver. And if there's a senior that we should honor, obviously we're honoring all of them and they all deserve to be honored, but I think Maddie Carr is at the top of that list. Oh, she is with her personality and... Her, her contributions to the University of Denver. Yeah, not just contributions in gymnastics, but yeah, just... as a leader. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Just a quick reminder that College Gym News is your one-stop shop for all things college gymnastics. For event coverage, leotard rankings, in-depth features, fantasy gymnastics resources, and more, visit collegegymnews.com. And if you're interested in supporting CGN's expanding coverage, visit collegegymnews.com slash donate. College Gym News, all the college gymnastics news you want all in one place. So again, if you all want to add to our fan favorites, you can tweet us. Our Twitter is at Routine Podcast. You can email us at info at the routine podcast .com, Or you can leave us a voicemail about your favorites. Or you can leave us a comment on our website about your favorites. And our website is the routine podcast .com. And we haven't heard a voicemail recently. Since people are quarantined and home in their computers, I think it's the perfect time to leave voicemails. And I think the fan favorite is a really good mm -hmm. episode to leave those voicemails for. So you do that by going to the episode, clicking the voicemail button. You'll see a microphone. Click the microphone and you leave us a voicemail message. And if you like today's episode, be sure to give us five stars on the Apple Podcast app. It really helps us out. And we hope you all enjoy another week of quarantine. And we hope you all stay safe and eat a lot of banana bread, zucchini bread, <laughs> peanut butter cookies, chocolate chip cookies, and just have fun. That's so interesting because you got on me last time for baking and eating peanut butter cookies. And now you're like, eat all you want. Have fun. <laughs> well, seeing as though we're quarantined for who knows how long, just, you know, 
Live life. That's how I felt last time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I made another batch of peanut butter yeah. cookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess right. who ate them who said they wouldn't eat any? Well, last week was rough. I needed some <laughs> sugar in my life. <laughs> and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.